What's your hurry, Angel? I thought you promised Marshal Earp not to make any more trouble. No trouble. I just want to have a sociable talk. Come on in here, huh? Stop that! Oh, what are you doing? Being hard to get? You let go of me! I have a gun! You... Yeah, you give me that. Why, you little wild... Hold it! You go on down and join your husband. Go on. You I'll, shot me. I'll take care of you. Go on. Get inside. Marriages between white men and Indian girls happened rarely, even on the Kansas frontier of 1877. Despite the sentimental guff written about squaw men, the strongest barrier to such marriages was the sacrifice demanded of any Indian girl who dared to marry a white man. Fighting tribes like the Sioux, the Apaches, and the Cheyenne greeted such romances with deadly anger. Marshal Earp would rather face a great gunman than become involved with a white husband and an Indian wife. I'll be a squaw man in a Dodge Hotel. You're going upstairs. That's something. You ain't a bad looking filly either. I left my gun out in the wagon. I'll meet you outside. I'll be with you in just a second, Mr. Squall Man. What's it all about, mister? Never mind. Let's get out of range. You're a slow hand, Mr. Jones. This young fellow's sore and he's sober. He insulted me and my wife. Oh, you're the marshal. Look, Mr. Jones is a slow hand with a gun. He's been drinking. You want an apology or an easy gunfight? An apology. Look, I'm trying to save your life. Either you apologize or I stand aside and let you shoot it out. So I apologize. Look, my wife and boy are in there. I stop a gunfight, I'm to keep it stopped. I'm sorry. Are you Wyatt Earp? That's right. Well, then, from what I've heard about you, I'll have a chance to explain the trouble. All right. We'll take a walk and cool off. Dick? Well, first, I'd like you to meet my wife, Mrs. Melanie. Laura, this is Marshal Wyatt Earp. Howdy, man. Your husband was going to kill Mr. Jones, and I, uh, I didn't think he should. Well, no. Thank you. I left the baby inside. I better go back. I'll be right along, honey. I remember now. Your wife is the daughter of uh, Two Moon, chief of the Cheyenne. You folks got a cattle spread up north on the Wyoming line. Well, now, how did you know that? Well, I, uh... I got a couple of Cheyenne friends, uh, Mr. Brother and Mr. Cousin. They, uh, well, they gossip. <laughs> Come on, we'll take that walk. Without Laura, I'd still be a busted cow and working cattle somewhere in Texas. Well, sit down, sir. She stood by me through two blizzards, a drought, and nursed me through a fever. I owe her more than any man should owe a woman. Well, any husband with a good wife feels the same way. Well, this isn't the same kind of love, Marshal. She broke with her people for me. I urge this trip because I want to prove to her that she's my wife no matter what part of the country we're in. And for all time. You think I'm wrong? No, Mr. Melanie, I just think you got a special kind of a problem. But that uh, doesn't mean you got to go around fighting with every stupid sidewinder that makes remarks. You know, I've heard Indians make remarks, too. You couldn't print what some of them say. Well, my father-in-law doesn't think too much of me. Old Two Moon? <laughs> yeah, he's, a, he's a real tough customer. Well, you'll be all right once you get east of Kansas City. Out here, a lot of blood has been spilled on both sides. And I happen to think the Indians got a pretty rotten deal, but, well, the Indians aren't angels either. Well, Laura admits that. Unless she remembers how her people are outnumbered. 
Mr. Melanie, I'm ashamed to say this, but I advise you to stick close to the hotel. Your train leaves in the morning. I know. Well, we won't give you cause for any more trouble. And thank you, Marsha. Yeah. Let's get back to the hotel. is still in the hotel. Oh, just a stupid drunk. Hello, son. Uh, there's nothing sissy about this kid. Takes after your father. Some, but more you. What did Mr. Earp have to say? Oh, nothing much. He thinks we ought to keep off the streets. Just to avoid another hoodlum like Jones. So we must hide from white people. Only in Dodge City, honey. It's that Custer fight. My father told me the Sioux were trying to run away and, and Custer charged them with his pony soldiers. So you and I have to hide. All right. I have to go to the depot and buy tickets. You and Grant come with me. We won't hide. Hide? What else? I am bad-tempered. You go to the station, but you leave your gun here. Mr. Earp is a good man, and we will do as he says. Now go quickly, and I'll prepare food for us. Now that's my girl. Well, you can heat Little Chief's milk in the hotel kitchen. And don't forget to boil it, huh? I am stupid, dirty Indian. Oh, no, we smoked the peace pipe, remember? Yes, I remember. My sweetheart. I'll be back. Now you be a good boy. And I'll be right back. I'll bring you some milk. Well, hello now. Oh, there's nothing to be scared of. I like engines. Please, I'm going to the kitchen. Well, no hurry. Come on, let's have a no, drink. No, huh? no, stop. Let go of me. I have a gun. Oh, sure. You're a bad little engine. <laughs> you little... Oh. I'll shoot you in the head this time. No. Are you going back in your room and stay there? Where's your husband? He went to the depot to buy tickets. I'll talk to him about this. Are you going back in your room? Doctor, caused enough trouble around here. She shot me. I don't care. Let me explain it. She'll think you're going to put her in jail. Look, she shot him in self-defense. I can explain that. I knew it. Grant and I go back to our people. We love you, but we are Cheyenne. Laura. I can catch me if you give me a fast horse. Just take it easy. Sit down. You know your wife better than to try forcing her to come back. You got any idea where Two Moon is? No, it's a west and a dozen trails to follow. I should never have left him alone. Two Moon will keep them. I know him. Maybe. Let's see what Mr. Cousin, Mr. Brother, had to say about this. So you stay here. <laughs> Bro, 
girl who talk white go to mission school. Tumu not like it. Then she marry Mr. Malani. Tumu not like it. Then she have son, named boy after President Grant. Tumu not like that either. He like Horace Greeley. All right, Mr. Cousin. Where's Mrs. Melanie now? Why at her part there at the Tumu Chatso? Mr. Ape Chakma, in Minoble, he. Girl who talk white and little boy go to Tumun's camp. She's afraid she get put in jail for shooting bad white men. How did you know about that? You sent for us. We asked Tumun if it's all right. He not like it. Well, Tumun never likes anything. Now, which way to his camp? Pony soldier after Tumun. We tell, he kill us. Hmm. Is camp far away? All right. You asked Two Moon to meet me on the trail. Half a day ride from this camp. What if he say no, Mr. Herb? Well, then I'll take a posse and find Two Moon. There'll be a lot of bang bang. Bacaldo y jeaje bang bang, Two Moon. Push no, emi no, keo, Two Moon. Mr. Brother wants to know if you promise not to kill Two Moon. I won't kill Two Moon, but you can tell him this for me. If he doesn't talk this over peaceably, he isn't going to live too long. We have to raid that camp. Their bullets are going to be flying awful thick. You camp here, my good friend. We tell to move. Your grandson is a smart little fella. Why you say little white talk is smart? Well, his father gave him some toy soldiers and Indians, and he, uh... Pull the arms and legs off half of the soldiers so it'd be easier for the Indians to scalp them. Now, why don't you send your daughter back to her husband? White husband is a coward. Oh. Cowhand insult my daughter. Is Cowhand dead? Your daughter wounded him. Brave husband fight for wife. Let white husband kill Cowhand. Bring his body to me. Then I will talk with him. Well, I can't make any promises for Mr. Melanie. Now tell him what you said. A good beefsteak. Yes, sir. Would you like to have a little bit? Uh, thank you. Nice family you married into. Your father-in-law wants you to kill Rex Jones and bring the body into camp. Well, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Jones hit the trail for Texas this morning. Oh, I wouldn't have tried to gun him down. I'm not Cheyenne, and I don't take orders from two of them. Well, I'll get a hold of Sheriff Masterson. We'll round up some deputies and raid the camp. No deal. Look, I can do it legally. Grant your little boy and Two Moon kidnapped him. Two Moon wouldn't harm him and lawyer. But the young Braves might. Just loan me a Cheyenne, friends. Laura must be pretty well sick of life in a Cheyenne Lodge by now. I think I can talk her into leaving with me. Sure, and get yourself killed, too. You know, you're not very popular with that old Indian. Two Moon thought he owned Laura. Wish me luck, huh? No, well, I'm going along, too. Meet me over at the jail, huh? You know, uh, Mr. Brother and Mr. Cousin aren't like horses and guns. You, uh, you can't borrow them. Now, I can find Two Moon, but it's going to take a little longer. Quiet. What's the matter, Al? Well, uh, go on. We had to shoot three-fingered Finnegan. What? He cut loose on Jocko, winged him in the gun arm. Finnegan dead? Yes, sir. Come here. Where's the body? At the coroner's. All right. I want you to snatch that body tonight and follow my trail in the morning. But why? That's an order. I'll take the blame. Go on. Well? You have risked your life for us many times. We do what you say. He. Good. Bring that saddlebag with. No, 
there's danger. My father's having us watched. You must go quick. We rode all night to get here, Laura. Now, Wyatt, brother and cousin are back there close by. We can all leave together. Now, come on. No, they will kill you. The, the boy and I are happy here. Please, goodbye. You're not a very good liar, huh? Now, come on. Carlo? We shoot. No, we get out of here. It comes, sir. What do they say? Young man want to shoot Mr. Melanie. Girl who talks white says she must talk to Two Moon first. We saw. Ne walani, nota. Hey, how am Lego? How am I Girl having her way. I hope Marshal Erp goes back to Dutch City. Hey, you two skedaddle out of here. You've done all you can, and I thank you very much. You stay here? No. Where, then? None of your business. Now, go on. The two of you right out of here, pronto. Mr. Erp, I, uh, Two Moon, eh? Mr. Brother thinks you go to Two Moon's camp. Is that true? Yeah. Two Moon will listen to me. Why? Mr. Cousin, like you said, this is a family row. Two Moon is a father-in-law. Father-in-laws like to talk a lot. He'll want to tell his side of the story before he does anything to Mr. Melanie. We stay here and claim body of Marshal Earp. Yeah. Am I invited to wedding? No. Am I told that little white talk is coming? No. Am I asked to see my own grandchild? No. What is two moon? Low dog? Coward in battle? I am chief of the Cheyenne. Mr. Melanie was wrong. Wrong? He is a disgrace to me and my people. What is Melanie? A soldier? No. A brave man with a star like you? No, he is nothing. He has a few cattle, land he stole from the Arapaho. My daughter married a thief as well as a coward. No more talk. He dies. If you let me talk to Mr. Melanie, it may stop a war. There'll be no war. Oh, yes. If you kill him and me, the army will be after you. I do not touch Marshal Earp. You young braves will get excited and finish me off. It's too bad. Soldiers and Indians dying over a family quarrel. I thought Two Moon was a smart chief. Wait. What do you say to Melanie? I tell him he was a complete fool. What else? That I would have to take your side. You stand up for Indian. You love your grandson. He should be allowed to visit you. And you should always be welcome in Mr. Melanie's home. I do not like the name Grant. What about the name? Well, I think he should be christened uh, Grant Two Moon Melanie. Hmm. And you should be invited to the christening. Your heart is good. You talk with this man. And I'm bound to say that I, well, that I sympathize with Two Moon. After all, he is your son's grandfather, you know. It wasn't all my doing. Laura, you know how shy and treat their women. Laura came back from mission school. She found her father had stopped trying to act civilized. She was the chief's daughter, but she was his property. Well, I think the boy has changed Two Moon. His first grandson. Move closer. Hmm? Laura gave me her gun inside my shirt. Well, I'll take it. But first, I want to talk to Two Moon again. Tell him that you're sorry, that he'll be treated like a grandfather. He wants more. You'll see. Now, quick, light me a smoke and take the gun.
Ah, you get him. I talked to your chief. Hey, hold me. Where's Wyatt? He talked to Two Moon. I stole the body he wanted. Now, what's the plan? He no tell. I think we wait here. Uh, and I better not go barging in any Cheyenne camp until Wyatt says so. I give you my word. Mr. Melanie's heart has changed. You will belong to his family after this. But it isn't going to help any. You're keeping him and Laura and little Grant Two Moon prisoner. You forget something. What? Cohan insult my daughter. Where is body? You'll get the body. When? Look, I've taken your side. Mr. Melanie has promised to act decent. And all you can think about is cruel Indian revenge. Apamo. Why are taco? No. Now you walk out of here with your hands up. Go on. Now, I'm taking the Melanies out of this camp. Any objections from you and you'll be shot. I'll tell your men to get in front of you and walk. Openichi. Openichi! Come on. Hold it. Now, bring out your daughter and her son. Shoot now, no! Hal! No shooting! Did you bring the man that Dick killed? He's back there in the wagon. Bring him here. I will look at him. Get Melanie and my grandson. Look with care, my daughter. Is that the man? Yes. He is the man who insulted me. Then you are not a coward. Take your wife and go. Not without my son. Now tell your grandfather you will see him soon. You will all leave. Except Marshal Earp. All go. daughter is still mine. She grabbed gun for fear you shoot. My grandson is mine. He hold my hand real tight. True. I will try to like my son-in-law. But that is not body of man who insult my family. This is Three Fingers Finnegan. Your own men shoot him in Dodge City. I will say this for Marshal Earp. He keep face like Indian. Check my hot dog. Check my hot dog. You think little two moon look like me? Yes, sir. I think there's a strong resemblance. Good. You go now. Thank you, Chief. Ever since Bat Masterson's election as sheriff of Ford County, Wyatt had known he must appoint a chief deputy to replace Masterson. Bat had proved himself with guns and fists. In Wyatt's absence, the hoodlums of Dodge City respected Masterson. Any other man named chief deputy would have it tough. Here you leaving town, Wyatt. Yeah, that's right. Sheriff Masterson sent word he's got some bank robbers holed up in Bushwhacker. Hal, you'll be acting chief deputy. Yes, sir. Hank, Ted, and Lou, you'll be taking orders from Hal until I get back. Why, why can't uh, Hal or one of us go help uh, Masterson? Well, because I know Bushwhacker and you don't. Hal, if you want to ask any questions, ask him while I'm loading. Right. Sir. The boys are right, Wyatt. This is no time to leave town. I didn't pick the time, Hal. But I did pick you as acting chief deputy. Well, you know the routine and how I want it run. And I trust you. 
Now you trust yourself. Yes, sir. I'll be back late this evening sometime. You explain it to Mayor Kelly. I didn't have time. Right. Congratulations, Chief. Yeah, you deserved it. Thanks, fellas. The appointment's only temporary. Now, what else you got in your mind? Well, Ted's been griping that his patrol is rougher than mine, so I thought I'd swap him. If it's all right with you. No. Each of you knows the rough spots in your own patrol. Oh, hell. No. Get moving. Al. Yeah, Louis. Today might be a rough one. Aren't you going to swear in a couple extra deputies? With Wyatt out of town, it'll take at least two guns to make up for him. Huh? I said it'll take at least two guns to make up for him. And you'd always want to do things your way. You admit you're short-handed. Why don't you let me swear in some special deputies? Mr. Mayor, special deputies are all right in the posse, but they're no good here. They just make extra business for the undertaker. Indeed, no. Indeed, indeed, no. Now, cow hands have no respect for special deputies. They doubt that they're going to risk their lives just for a couple of days of extra work. Come on, Hal, we'll go get the drunks. Now, Wyatt, just speaking of undertakers... Oh. In the hoodlum south, the line respect us, sure. But they ain't scared of us like they're scared of Wyatt. If I was you, I'd swear in four extra men. No. Huh? No, Wyatt doesn't approve of special deputies in town. Neither do I. Check the saloons. Just as you say, Chief. Louis thinks Wyatt should have made him Chief Deputy. In a tight spot, will he let me down? What is this now, Hal? Wyatt's riding out of town. When'll he be back? Tonight, Mr. Mayor. He went to help Sheriff Matheson. And he left you in charge? Yes, sir. Oh, word sure gets around fast. The Snaky W outfit just hit town, and they're all wearing guns. Where are they? The Alhambra Saloon. I'll swear in some special deputies. No, sir. What? Snaky W is not so tough. I'll make him check their guns. Oh, no, Hal. Maybe I hurt your feelings. You're better than average with a gun, but you ain't wide Earp. I know that, Mr. Mayor, but the Snaky W's ain't wide Earp either. Excuse me. The average cowhand is mostly bluff and bluster, Hal. He has to be awful drunk to shoot at a deputy. He knows I'll be after him. But when you do move on a gun toter, move steady and in a straight line. Well, if it ain't one Earps, little boy. Oh. Hey, that All of you wearing guns, check them. Check them, I said. Niven. Check this. Mike, put this behind the bar. What's the idea, Hal? You ain't wider. It's lucky for you why it isn't here. I warned you once, Nevin. If they don't check your guns, you send word to me pronto. You understand? Yes, Marshal. I'm closing you for a couple of days. You keep on acting like Herb, and why well, I'd close you for this. I'm giving you a break. Next time you sell drinks to men wearing guns, you will be closed. Any back talk out here, I'll slap you silly. I see. Why is the kid shot at me? I'll take that gun. What happened? Well, I asked him for a job. He cussed me, so I cussed him back. He started to draw, so I shot him. Mr. McKay never even reached toward his gun. That's right. Quiet. Quiet. You didn't want to you see what happened? No, sir. Look, I'm telling the truth, officer. Are you lying? Oh, you're it's regular. Come on, give me back my gun. This is a necktie party. No. You bet it's a necktie party. Hold it, hold it. Start this boy off the jail. Now, there'll be no necktie party. But Mr. Norton... Don't crowd me. Pick him up. Yeah. 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 
That was close. Ted and Hank backed me up. I know why they think I'm doing right. Now, I don't care how much money these cattlemen bring in at Dodge City, Mr. Kelly. I'm running the marshal's office until I'm fired. Well, I don't oh, think you should Marshal Earp is right, gentlemen. Now, you can always lynch a man, but if he's innocent, you can't bring him back to life. Now, I told you I'm investigating the case. Any of you want to adopt my word, we'll step outside. No, no, Wyatt. Wyatt. Now, gentlemen, I promise you a fair and square investigation. Now, just come along, and we'll let Marshal Earp handle this. That's right. You should have taken a poke at him. Uh, Mr. Kelly's a friend of mine. He's, he's got his problems, too. He'll try and get your job. Al, there are two things that a peace officer has to be ready to toss on the table. One's his job, and the other's his life. We're still breathing. shot was Todd McKay, the sneaky W foreman. Yeah? Dave Williams just got in town. So? Don't you remember? He owns the sneaky W spread. He's a big man. He'll tree this town. What are we supposed to do? Stand still? Oh, quit talking like Wyatt, will you? No. I'm even trying to think like Wyatt. <laughs> Yards. Yeah. Well, you sure know this bushwhacker country. I never would have found them. About seven of them. We're gonna have to spook them. Tie your horse off. Bring him over here. Go on. Lay him against that rock. Put a tourniquet on that arm. You start patching him up. Well, get over here. Well, I guess there won't be any train robbing for a while. Thanks. Yeah. So, your name is Denny Kirk. You're a saddle tramp from Arizona. You came here to see a girl by the name of Pauline over at the Stagecoach Cafe. You'd never seen Mr. McKay till you hit him for a job. Well, I lied about that. No. I had a row with him. How's that? Well, he got fresh with Pauline. I left my gun belt on my horse at the livery stable. When he cussed me, I said I wasn't big enough to fight him with my fist, but I'd gun him if he didn't quit bothering Pauline. He just laughed at me. So you laid for him and gunned him? No, sir. You got to believe this, Mr. Norton. I run into Mr. McKay by accident. Wearing a gun? Well, I had to wear it. I made my brag about gunning him. Pauline made me promise to get out of town. 
I know it was wrong to go arm, but Mr. McKay had a gun, too. Where's Pauline now? She's probably sore at me for breaking my word. Where's this Marshal Earp that Pauline makes such a big hero of? He's out of town. My luck. Doesn't look like such a strong jail. No jail's any stronger than the officers in it. Lock them up. What are we booking them on? I don't know yet. I say it's murder, they'll bust me out of here and hang me. Easy now. right side pocket. Did he reach for this? No, but he was going to. All right, two spots, you be at the inquest. Yes, Marshal. Get some of your men to take care of the body. You mean that's enough to get Two-Spot off just because the other man was carrying a gun? Well, Two-Spot was afraid, Hal. Now, all he's got to do is swear that he knew Mr. Averill was carrying a weapon. See, the law has got to recognize that a man who's in fear of his life can't be expected to act with steady nerve in a situation. A lot of peace officers don't understand that. We have to wait until the hoodlum actually starts his draw. That can be a long wait sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it sure can. You never take any chances with a man that's scared. You pity him, but you buffalo him real quick. Marshal Earp! Marshal Earp! Oh, you! Where's Marshal Earp? He's out of town on a case. You must be Miss Pauline from the cafe. Yes, I am. When will he be back? Tonight, I hope. Oh, that's not soon enough. Oh, there's mean talk downtown. You got Denny in there? Yep. Well, you've got to let him out, Mr. Norton. I brought his horse. He can run for it. I can't do that. Why can't you let him out? It was self-defense. I can testify. You see the shooting? I didn't have to see it. Denny was scared of that man. And so was I. He was really hounding me. He deserved killing. Marshal Lerp would turn him loose. I know he would. Not right now. You're nothing but a deputy. This would have to happen with Marshal Lerp out of town. I can pay you, Mr. Norton. I'll give you all the money I've saved. You trying to bribe me? Yes. They'll lynch Denny. Can't you understand that? Take it easy, Miss Pauline. Easy? I'm in love with him. What is your price for turning him loose? No price. You tell me all you know about the shooting. You mean from the start? Very, very sweet, Miss Oh, no. Yes, you are, and you're... Well, you're, you're smart, too. Now, now look, I, I want you to do me a favor, will you? Hmm? All right. I want you to tell your brother to come into Dodge City. Now, look, if I have to ride out there, he might get hurt. And, well, or I might get hurt. Now, you wouldn't want that, would you? No. Now, that's my girl. Now, you want me to trust you, don't you? Yes. Hmm? I'll go right away. You wait here. I'll wait right here. That's police work? <laughs> I, uh, I try to be patient with women, Hal. They, well, they get a dirty deal in this world. You know, I, I've seldom met a woman in trouble that wasn't put there by some man. Well, well, yes. Love? No, she's just lonesome. And she's, well, she really hasn't got anybody to turn to. She doesn't want her brother hurt, and I, well, I don't want to have to ride out there and shoot him. <sighs> now, you put your trust in women. They'll help you in cases where 12 men would be no help at all. And I don't know if Denny drew on him or not. But if Denny says that's what happened, that's what happened. Yeah. Well, I believe you. The jury might not. 
Now, Denny said that some men that live around town saw that fight. Then why don't you make him tell the truth? Oh, I can't search the whole town. That's your job. How? Where could I start? Go back to the cafe, ask a lot of questions, listen to the talk. Oh, but what if a mob should come? No, and... no, no. There are three deputies here and myself. They're not going to take Denny. If we can't fight him off, I'll turn him loose. I promise you that. I think I believe you. I'll do it, Mr. Norton. Thank you. Is she tied up with that young scamp? She's in love with him. Uh, well, Judge Tobin will be in on the 4 o'clock train. What's that mean, Mr. Mayor? It means quick trial for Danny Kirk. Oh, oh no, the jury isn't going to hang him. Main thing is to agree on a prison sentence and hustle that kid out of town. No, sir. Hmm? Huh? I think Denny shot out of self-defense. Oh, indeed, now. Well, have you got any witnesses to prove it? I'm working on that right now, Mr. Mayor. You know Wyatt, he'd raise particular net of a thing like this. Wyatt! But you're acting, Marshal. I know. I'm trying to handle this the way I think he'd want me to. Well, Wyatt isn't here. I don't mean to cast any reflections on you. But Earp and Masterson can throw real fear into those cattlemen. They aren't afraid of us. If we get tough with Dave Williams, he'll lynch that kid. I know. Dave Williams isn't afraid of me. Well, the point of it is, Mr. Mayor, I'm not afraid of Dave Williams. Something troubling you, Mr. Kelly? Where's Ted and Hank? Oh, well, they went back on patrol. Norton's not handling this thing with common sense. Well, I got authority to fire him, you know. Now, suppose I was to make you act in Marshall. You and the other boys do like I say? Can't answer that till I talk to Ted and Hank, Mr. Mayor. Well, go talk to them and be quick about it. Yes, sir. Hey, Norton. One thing you should always keep in mind about Texas men, Hal. They're still fighting the Civil War in Kansas. Eleven minutes to four, I make it. You're almost five minutes slow. But that's natural. <laughs> did Jim Kelly tell you about trying that young punk? Yes, he did. You collecting a jury? The judges do it for. What's the big rush, Mr. Williams? Talks just like Wyatt Earp, don't he? <laughs> Patterns himself after that short horn imitation. He'll never call Wyatt names to his face. Take them, boys. Try it. One at a time. Take off Mr. the Mr. Norton. Thing. Mr. Norton, in the cafe, quick. Later. I got some business here. Next time you see us, it'll be in court. Court? Oh, no, Denny did shoot in self-defense. You come with me, hurry. So that's the play. Norton's going to try to get the kid off. Just let him try. They're the ones, Marshal, these two. They saw it. I heard him talking. Well, Pauline must be loco, Hal. Nobody saw nothing. On your feet. You too. Well, what's it all about? Material witnesses. Try and get me some more. Come on. Well, how many times do I have to tell you there's nothing to be scared about? It. All you have to do is to testify to what you saw. That'll convince Williams that his man was asking for trouble. But what about that kid in there? You want to see him railroaded off the prison? Or taken out by a lynch mob? Oh, you're wasting your breath, Hal. Now, if Wyatt Earp was here, it'd be something different. You said you'd protect us, sure. But Earp's the only man they're scared of. And besides, I don't... Any luck? No. Well, we can't spare the time. Party starting? Yep. Lock him up. Come on, boys. Starting early before Wyatt gets back. We better be getting outside. Why don't we pick them off from the doors and windows? 
You can't hide from a mob, Louie. Gives them too much courage. From the sound of that mob out there, they got all the courage whiskey can give them. Yeah, well, drunk or sober, Hal, all mobs are alike. Now, one gunslinger who's made up his mind to go all the way is a lot more dangerous than 50 men in a mob. At least it's been my experience. Now, you can stay here if you want to, Louie. Louie always acts that way before a fight. Just don't get too brave out there. Wait till the boss shells cut loose. I've been following Wyatt for some time. All right, you come or stay, but I don't want you arguing with Hal if you come with us. I want silent deputies with their thoughts on spraying buckshot where it's going to do the most good. All right, let's go. Hal, the sneaky W's are on their way across the plaza. We'll meet them on the outside. The kid said you promised to give him a gun. I changed my mind about that. Here's one for you. There's only about 15 of them. But I sure wish Wyatt was here. So do I. Why don't we use rifles and pick them off from cover? We can't do that. If we did, every cow hand in town would be shooting at us. Now, I'll do all the talking. Lou, you take the left, Hank the right, and Ted the center. Don't shoot until you hear me cut loose with that first barrel. That's close enough. Don't be a fool, Norton. Kelly lied about the judge. Judge Tobin missed the train. But we're on time. What happened to your other deputies? They missed the train, too? I said, don't be a fool. Erpen Masterson may try to even things. But you'll be dead. Get out of our way. We're coming in. Oh, no, fuck, Hal, we'll blast them. Don't shoot! Why, right, you. These men don't want to lynch an innocent kid. Better have Dr. McCarty look at Mr. Williams. The rest of you beat it. Go on, move. It's about time. I thought you'd never get here. What's the matter? You been having a little trouble? A little trouble? Why, I... Oh, no, sir. It was nothing I couldn't handle. Well, that's what I expected, my chief deputy. Erp! Why on earth? Come out of that cave with your hands up. All right, we're coming in after you. Go get him, boys. bitterness between Texas cattlemen and the Cowtown Marshals of Kansas was an aftermath of the Civil War. There were those in the South who never fired a shot to help the Confederacy, but who were now determined to aggravate the Yank Johnny laws who tried to keep order in Kansas. Marshal Wyatt Earp of Dodge City was a shining target for all manner of schemes to assassinate him or run him out of Dodge. Perhaps the shrewdest of Wyatt's enemies was Big Drum Denman, owner of the REB cattle spread. Big Drum had, at least, an original idea. Well, ain't you coming into town, Mr. Denman? Naturally, I thought that... No, sir, Big Drum ain't taking his boys into Dodge. Earp has too many deputies, and he can call on Bat Masterson and his sheriff's posse. Every man who's tried to get Wyatt Earp in Dodge City has come a cropper. You know what it means, in? Smart analysis, Mr. Denman. But what's this all leading up to, Drum? I run a print shop in Dodge. I can't now, afford hold to... hold on, Inky. Wait a minute. The answer is simple. We prod Earp into coming out here. Get him so red-headed hostile, all he can think about is settling with me. Well, now, uh, I never knew Earp to lose his temper that bad. <laughs> Always the first time's in. Hey, uh, Curly, Ringgold, come here. Hello, 
on, Sammy. We got a new paper in town? Yes, sir. It's the Rebel, and it's free. Extra! Extra! Read all about Wyatt The Earth truth Earth. about Wyatt Earp. Extra. Dodge City Marshal consorts with coarse women. <laughs> Why don't you keep the front lines down? No need trying to hide. Herp will know I'm doing the job. He doesn't have to know that I'm mixed up with it. Quit acting stupid, Zinner. Everybody in town knows you do legal work for Denman. You're his attorney. Not in this case. Here, this is for tomorrow's sheet. All right. And remember the deal. You're to keep me out. If Herp corners you, blame it on Denman. Uh-oh. Jim Kelly. I'm leaving. Ain't you open for business? Well, sure, sure, Mr. Kelly, but I had some work to do on the press, and I... And on this, huh? You miserable scamp. Well, I had to do it. Certain fellow has a mortgage on my shop, and he... Uh, who wrote this film? Uh, Ron Denman, Mr. Kelly. He he said if I didn't print it, he'd, he'd call Malone and put me out of business. Indeed, now. And where is Denman? Oh, he's at Buffalo Walla. Out the town. Well, and when's he coming in to dodge? Oh, he ain't coming in to dodge, Mr. Kelly. He's scared of Marshal Irvin. Mm, drum better be scared. And you print one more and you'll be scared, understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I, I hope you'll explain to Marshal Irv. I had to do it. It was the only way I could get my shop free and clear. Well, you've been warned, you, you ink pot. Oh, no. I don't print this. You tear that up and you'll... You, you expect me to print this? You're wrong. Earp will gun us. Both of us. No. Earp will try to get Denman, and that's just what Drum wants him to do. But Sally Davis... She's never had anything to do with Earp. She's a new preacher's daughter, just a kid in her teens. Never mind. Print it. Don't be a fool. I'm leaving us both the way out. Read the masthead. It says, Drum Denman Editor. Herp will go after Denman, not us. But it ain't right to do that. All to right, no more gab. We'll see Drum about this. You tell him you won't print it. No. But Drum could get more than he's asking for. Uh-uh. Drum's got some fast guns out there just waiting for her. Callum says it was Denman of the R.E.B. brand outfit. Big drum? Yeah. I told him not to come back to Dodge City. He didn't. He's camped out in the old Buffalo Wall. I warned Callum not to print anything more. But maybe we better close his shop. Uh, big drum could just get another place in another town to do his printing. Yeah. This is a new angle, Mr. Kelly. A man hides out in the brush and blisters me with a scandal sheet. Uh, don't talk about it out here. Let's go inside. Well, you got the whole town talking, Drum. That's a good starter. Did it rile the great Marshal Earp? Not enough. But Jim Kelly traced the sheet to Callum and warned him not to print another edition. You see, Ringo? Just the same as calls Earp a Yankee. You boys ain't seen nothing yet. Just wait till you read what I say about him tomorrow. That ought to bring him out on the run, huh, Zinner? It certainly should. Curly, you and Ringgold and the boys better oil up your guns. We got him shine like a mower sickle. We can't hardly wait. I can wait. Where do you want her buried, Mr. Denman? You deliver the body, Ringgold. I'll find him a grave. Who is it? Mr. Earp, it's, it's Sally Davis. Just a minute. <laughs> Sally, what's the matter? Miss Anne.
Wyatt Earp and Preacher's daughter. Courtship is Sally Davis. Daddy's riding the church circuit. I took this off the porch so Mama wouldn't see it, but they'll both see it. Everybody will. It's all over town. I didn't think Demma would go this far. It's my fault, Sally. I should have arrested Callum and closed up his print shop yesterday. Well, it's awful. I'm afraid to go home. I can't even walk on the street. How could anybody tell such a horrible lie? Well, Mr. Denman will admit that he lied and apologize to you in public. I can promise you that. Sally, your folks and the people here in Dodge, they'll, well, they'll know this is just rotten slander. But I want to do something about that horrible man. I know how you feel, but don't you worry about it. It'll be done for you. Come on. You keep your chin up, huh? Yes, sir. All right. I want you to take this straight home to your mother and show it to her and tell her what I said. Huh? Thank you, Mr. Earp. I, I've been thinking only of myself. I guess it's just as bad for you. Well, it's going to be worse for Mr. Denman. Now, you run along. Here's the dynamite, Wyatt. Why don't you wait for Sheriff Masterson and the rest of them to get back from Abilene? Because this is my party, all my own. Go get the handcuffs, will you? Right. I know, I know, I read it. Mr. Kelly, I want you to relieve me from... Duty for a couple of days. What I'm about to do can't be done by a marshal. I want a posse, and I'm riding with it. Look, that camp has to be spooked. And that's a one-man job. Now, Wyatt... No posse. You only get in the way. You bring him out tomorrow if you want to. Ask Dr. McCarty to come along, too. Somebody will be needing him. The handcuffs. Thank you. My spooking boots, Mr. Kelly. He signed his dinner? Met him on the trail. Him and Inky got spooked. They were running out of Dodge. Where's Wyatt Earp? They didn't know. We sent him back to find out. If Earp's coming, this ain't the right place to take him. What's wrong with it? Earp and his posse could bushwhack us in here. Yeah, we should make the fight on open prairie, out there. What's the matter, you and Ringo feeling spooked? If they come in here, we'll close the gaps on them. I'm paying you boys to fight. Besides, Earp's no bushwhacker. You come busting in here with a posse and try to blast us. Curly and Ringgold. They went to the spring for fresh water. The spring for fresh water at a time like this? He's got that posse scattered all around. Yeah, and Drum will want us to go in the brush after him. Let's get the canteens back to camp.
didn't bring no posse, I tell you. It's just Earp all in his lonesome. Yeah, you tell us. He used to be a buffalo hunter. That's the way they used to frighten all the cow camps that interfered with their hunting. Earp could have killed you and Ringold. Masterson or Tillman would have killed you. The posse you're talking about doesn't exist. It's just Earp. Now, come on, let's get him before it's dark. You're our brave leader, Drum. What are the orders? Well, we fan out and comb both sides of that ravine. If we can't find Earp, at least we can find his camp. Come on, move out. Fire the camp! Fire in camp! All hands! All hands! All hands! All fire, hands! Fire! 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 Put it out! Get, out. Put it out. Get out the fire! Yeah. Grab a blanket! Beat it out! Go to water on it! Get it out! Get it out! Come on! Beat it up! Beat it! Get it out! Come on! Beat it up! Beat it! Peep out of you and you're a dead man. You said you wouldn't fight fair. Look who's talking. All right, Mr. Denham. You're going to get your fair fight. Now, how do you want it? With guns, knives, or with fists? Just some bare hands, you Yankee scum. You to come into Dodge City and apologize to a certain young lady. No. All right. Are you going to come in and apologize? No. My boys will come here. They're on foot, but they'll find us. That's what I'm hoping for. I don't like this. We're walking right into Herb's trap. If you quit liking money, ring gold. Herb Paul's drum to jail, we won't never get paid. I'll go anywhere the rest of you will. Go on. 
Sit down. Lean forward. What's it easy? Your men are gonna come after you. So I'm going on back to Dodge City. <coughs> Maybe you'll change your mind about that apology in a couple of days. This camp, all right. The dirt's all kicked up. It looks like a cave over there. My arm's hurting. This is silly. Earth's drag drone back to Dodge. Well, we better take a look just to make sure. I don't know. Yeah, Earth may be land force in there. What, in that cave with no way out? Earth's smarter than that. All right, you look. We'll all look. Drum didn't hire just me. There's a light in there, but I can't make out nothing. Well, I can. It's thin. I'm all tied up. Now, you talked a brave battle. Hey, Drum, is Earp down there? All right, boss, your troubles are over. Trying to smother us in a cave. Right. Easy, Ringo. You all right? <coughs> no, I ain't all right. I want that guy killed. Now get out there and get it. Well, the entrance is blocked. There might be some other way. Out. Well, then find it. You can come up this way. There's a ladder to find in the cave. Come up one at a time. Take your gun belts off before you start. Why, you. <laughs> One more shot, and I'm going to start. Now drop your guns. We're coming out. Get the ladder. Come on, bring it in here. All right, come on. You come up with your hands empty. Mr. Denman, come on, come on. Get over there and kneel down. Kneel down! Well, Mr. Ringo, get over there. Kneel down over there. Kneel down! Come on. Both hands. I can't lift the other one. You busted my arm. Let's see, Curly. I haven't seen you since the fight of the little Allen. Let's not get sociable. You're a sassy either. Come on, get over there. Come on. Hands first. Gonna make us walk all the way to Dodge? I ought to make you crawl. You hired out the drum demon. 
He was old enough to fight in the war, but he didn't. His idea of being brave is to slander a young girl. Her name was Sally Davis. Just happens to be a niece of the Confederate president. Is that right, Drum? I offered him a chance to ride into Dodge City and apologize, but he wouldn't. That's a lie about that girl being related to Jeff Davis. No, it just happens to be the truth. But I'd make you apologize if you lied about any other innocent girl. That's 35 miles, gentlemen. We can make it easy by tomorrow morning. If he don't apologize, he better not show his face down Texas, will you? I, I, I'm sorry. I guess I've been wrong. Now you tell that to Sally Davis. Oh, what is this now? Well, Curly, Ringo, Denman. I'm walking him into Dodge City, Mr. Mayor. Into Dodge? Oh, oh now, Wyatt, that's more than 20 miles from here. Well, uh, Curly and Ringgold are hurt, but if they drop, I'll cut them off the line. The rest of them can make it all right. Well, I spooked them real gentle, like uh, Mr. Kelly. I must be getting old and soft. Hell, gentlemen, shall we travel? Who? Oh. Come on. Exhibition. Champ Starbuck, number one contender for the heavyweight championship, and it's free, free, free. Yes, sir, went up to $1,000 in gold. The champ will meet all comers. Oh, uh, Sonny, sign that up for me over here, will you? Thanks. <laughs> $100 given away to any man who can stay in the ring with the champion for one round, three minutes. $1,000 to the man who can beat him. Yes, sir, gents, now here's a chance for you to make a little extra change. You, you there, you look like a man that ought to be able to handle himself. Where's this champ of yours, mister? Oh, he'll be here this afternoon. Tell me, what do you weigh, mister? 2.15, uh, that's before dinner. About 2.25 after. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, mister, the champ only weighs 190 pounds. Now, I'm sure you wouldn't want to fight a man that much lighter than you, would you? For $1,000? Why, I'd fight one of my own mules for that. <laughs> <laughs> Your man better be here, like you say. Of course, of course. He'll be here, all right. <laughs> Hey, mister, is all that free? I mean, try for that hundred dollars and everything? Why, certainly, Sonny, the exhibition is free, and it'll only cost ten dollars to try for the big money. <laughs> See you all later this afternoon. I'll be there. <laughs> you better save your money, young fella. That man's a professional boxer. Oh, well, I don't expect to beat him. I just thought maybe I could stay out of his way for three minutes. That's not so long. That's long enough to get disfigured for life. Take Marshal Earp's advice and forget it. I've seen that man fight. Well, I'd like to try it. You say you, uh, you've seen this fellow Starbuck fight? Yeah, in Wichita last year. He's good, strong as a bull and fast. Yeah. Seems like a strange way to make a living. Yeah, he makes a good one, too. I saw him take on 19 men in two hours. Not one of them lasted the three minutes. He gets $190, plus whatever his manager won, covering bets. Hey, Bars. Yeah? That's Herb, the tall, black-haired one. All right. You think your fighter can handle him? Oh, now, please, Mr. Moresby, let's not joke, huh? Champ will break him in two. I hope. <laughs> yes, sir, for what you're paying us, we can bust him up pretty good. All right. Hundred and seventy two, hundred and seventy three at most. And Mosby sure hates him. I don't know why. All right, all right. 
right, come on, get up, wake up. Can't sleep all day, you got work to do. Come on, get up. Wake up. I'm hungry. Yeah, you look half starved. Say, did you ever run into that fellow, what's his name, Moresby? Yeah. And the man Moresby once flattened is the town marshal. Frank, you got a short memory. You remember that deputy up in Mabilene? He come looking for us with a gun. Yes, but this isn't just a deputy. This is Wyatt Earp himself. From the way I hear it, if we beat him uh, fair and square, he ain't gonna come after you with no gun. And from the way I hear it, he's pretty handy with his fist. Oh, <laughs> when you get through with him, he won't even have enough strength to lift a gun. Besides, if we bust him up pretty good, we get a bonus. How much? 300. How much? All right, all right, 500. 500? Frank, the trouble with you is you ain't honest. Look, I don't want you using those knucks on anybody but Wyatt Earp. Too many broken jaws around here and he'll get suspicious. Come on, come on, give them to me. All right. Now get dressed. I'm going over to the saloon. strong to me. Pretty good, doesn't he? Yeah. All right, all right. Now, who's the next lucky man? Me. Step right into the ring, I got ten dollars, and the champ can't drop him in three minutes. You're coming. <laughs> Are there any other bets like this? You'll win your bet. Don't worry. Hey, he's a little big for you, isn't he? Oh, yeah, maybe so. I'd like to try him, though. If I had ten dollars. Will he be here tomorrow? Don't know. Well, I need three dollars more. 
Maybe I'll learn that at the livery stable. What are you trying to do, scare everybody away? Oh, the big slob made me mad. Well, you can't afford to lose your temper. Hey, Boris. What about the marshal? What about Marshal Lerp? Yeah. <laughs> Marshal's got more important things to do. Come on, Wyatt, we've got to finish our work. Yeah, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Our job's not that important. Anyway, all the action's here today. Wyatt, please, don't get into the ring with him. He'll ruin you. Look, I'm not exactly a stranger to the manly art, you know. Wyatt, I'm telling you, the man's a professional. Well, maybe the $10 fee's too much for the marshal. I'll tell you what, marshal. The champ will waive the fee, just to show you he's a good sport. There you are, marshal. How do you like it? Not the money. Herp won't fight unless he knows he can win. Why, well, listen to me. You aren't so conceited that you have to accept every challenge you get. Is getting into that ring part of your job? Let's go. What are we going to do now, boss? Let's try again. You're going to stay another day, aren't you? What for? Only took in $40, including the bets I covered. And he's eating up most of that right now. I'll give you an extra 100 if you'll stay one more day. Whether I work or not? Yes. Except that you've got to agree to meet Herb, if we can get him to do it. And how are you going to do that? The man just won't fight? You haven't used the right approach. You've got to invite him into the ring in front of the whole town. Then if he refuses, you call him yellow right to his face. Yeah, sure. I've seen men get shot for a lot less than that. Not by Earp, you haven't. He won't shoot an unarmed man. Does that $500 bonus still stand? Of course. Hey, you! Bring me another one of these steaks. Good morning, Marshal. Good morning. Well, it sounds like you're enjoying your work this morning. <laughs> well, it's not only the work. I'll soon have enough money to fight the champ. Oh, is he still here in town? Yes, sir. Uh, you know, uh, what Sheriff Masterson said to you yesterday was good advice. This fellow's a professional, and he could, well, he could really hurt you badly. Well, if I tried to beat him, yes, sir, but... Well, I've made a little study of boxing, and I think I can stay out of his way for at least one round. Now, I need the money. I'd like to get back home. <laughs> Well, you don't like it here in Kansas, huh? <laughs> no, it's not that, sir. It's just that, well, my family's in New York, and well, I was on my way out to California, but things just didn't work out. Oh. Well, look, I uh, can lend you enough money to get home, then you wouldn't have to fight. The... Oh, no, thank you, Marshal. I appreciate that very much, but, well, it's more than just the money. Oh? Well, I'm interested in professional boxing myself, and, well, this would be the best experience I could get. Especially if I could win some money to boot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish you a lot of luck. Thank you, sir. Is he here yet? Not yet. We better get started and make it look right. All right. Well, good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> I see plenty of seats, so make yourself all comfortable. Now, I see a lot of familiar faces here, so there's no reason for my going into great detail. Just want to know who's going to be the first man to challenge the champ. Now, as you know, 
for every round you stay with them, there's one hundred dollars in United States currency, and there is one thousand dollars in. I'll try it, Mister. Here's the money. Oh, now, aren't you a little bit young for this sort of thing, Sonny? Come on back next summer. We'll be here again. I'm ready now. Your sign said all comers. Let the kids ride. Give them a chance. <laughs> all right, all right. We have the ten, Sonny. You ask for it. Here you go. Now go on over in your corner. There it is, right over there. You're making a mistake. He's going to hurt you real bad. I'm going to fight him, sir. All right. Keep away from him as long as you can. And stick that left hand out in front of you. It might be able to last three minutes at that. Yes, sir. He's on. All right, now just give him some of the regular show for a couple of minutes and then drop him. You don't have to hurt him too bad. How are you doing over there? Ready. Go. Come on, champ. Show that smart thing. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. You might be able to do it at that. Come on, we'll get these things done. No, I'm not quitting. You won the hundred dollars. I'm trying for the thousand. I might be able to beat him. Okay. What's the matter with you anyway? He's too fast. He can't hurt me, but he's too fast. All right. All right, then we've got to use these. Oh, we're not made of money. They've already cost us a hundred. Start some action. All right, I got some betting money here. Anybody like that kid? I'm still betting on Starbuck. What do you say? I got you, Mr. Right over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got him. What do you say? Right over here, Mr. Right. You ready, son? Let's go. Ready, Jack? Come on, come on. Go! 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 Take it easy with him. Take it easy. Take it easy. Pull him down with Just take it easy. Just take it easy. Ribs feel broken. Marshal, listen. He didn't hit me that hard. Huh? There's something in his glove. I'm sure of it. I'll get you over the doctor. Can you walk? Yeah, I think so. See that he gets there. Right. Hey, wait a minute. I've waited long enough. Go on. Go ahead. Challenge him now. 
Doesn't look like I'm going to have to. Let's do it anyway. Well, Marshal, you going to fight me anyway? I sure don't. Are you yellow, like everybody's been saying? Let me see your hands, Starbuck. Oh, now, wait a minute, Let me Marshall. see your hands. Let me see the other one. You know, I've met a lot of miserable men in my business, Starbuck, quite a few cowards. But none of them as bad as you. Now, I've never said this to anyone before, but I'm saying it now. If I ever catch you in this town again, I'm liable to shoot you down like a mad dog. I believe you. Since we're talking so plain, Marshal, I got a few things to say, too. You're no different than a hundred gun slicks I run into around this country. Take them guns off and you ain't half a man. Do we still get that 500? Of course. We're not fighting your rules now. No gloves, and no rounds. One of us is going to walk away from here, and the other's going to be carried away. That's fine with me. Wait a minute, what about him? Don't worry about him. Take care of yourselves. Mr. Masterson, it looks like the champ would like a fair fight for a change. You take off your guns. I've got you ain't ten... fighting no kid now, sir. Let's go, Mr. Come on, get him. Yeah, Come on, you run back. Get him, sir. Got him. Come on, come on. I told you everyone was going to get carried out of here. You carry him out. And don't even show your face in this town again, either of you. All right, all right, Marshal. Now, just a minute. It's a matter of a hundred dollars to that boy who stood around with your ex-champ. We better get out of here. All right, that's all I got. Better collect the rest from Moresby. Promised us 500 bucks if we chop you up. Moresby! Come on, Jim. I need $65 from you. Thank you, Mr. Moresby. Now, the next time you feel I need a beating, I hope you'll try it yourself. I'll be happy to accommodate you. Now, in the meantime, I suggest you make your headquarters in some other city. Hi, fella. How do you feel? Oh, not too bad. Doc McCarty said I cracked one of my ribs. <laughs> He's got me so taped up I can hardly breathe. <laughs> well, say, here's the, uh, here's the money you want. Oh, thanks very much, sir. Sheriff Masterson was telling me about your fight. I sure wish I could have seen it. Well, it's a lot of fun while it lasted, I'll have to admit that. Well, now you know how I feel about fighting and 
why I want to be a professional. Yeah, I guess I do. Well, I wish you a lot of luck. I hope I'll be hearing a lot about you someday. You will, Mr. Herb. Well, thanks again for everything. Well, say, by the way, if I'm going to be uh, following your career, I don't know who you are. Just occurs to me I never did get your name. Oh, Fitzsimmons, sir. Bob Fitzsimmons. Well, thanks again. It was nice to have known you both. Open the door. Drop that gun, Hammer. One move and your driver's a dead man. Ah, no money box, I see. A nice trick if you got away with it, Herb. Remember, this man dies if you don't stay put. All right, close the door. Get back up there. He was between 35 and 40, uh, brown eyes, uh, black vest and light shirt. Uh, he was wearing two guns with white handles. Uh, oh, initials on the handles. They, it looked like three H's. And his horse, uh, well, he was uh, a sort of a buckskin. Well, that's a very good description. Now, tell me what happened. Well, uh, we were riding along, and all of a sudden, from no... Don't worry. Right on the ground, both of you. Now listen, mister. All I've got in the world is in my pocket. You ain't gonna take that. Shut up and stand still. You, come here. Please, I'm not a well man. Bullet won't make you any healthier. Come here. Well, well, you're watching chain. Got any other jewelry? Rings? Stick pin? No. That's all I've got. All right. Get back in. Both of you. You too, my friend. You mean you ain't gonna... Rob you? Why should I? Only take from those who can afford it. From the looks of him, he's got plenty more. He's a banker. My favorite kind of customer. Get in, my friend. I don't bother working people. Get going. Get, get, baby. Now, you say he didn't bother Mr. Parker or the driver, hmm? No. Says he only robs the rich. Marshal, I'm willing to put up a reward for this man. No, that won't be necessary, Mr. Sloan. We'll catch him if we can. Well, I certainly hope you do. Sound familiar? Yeah, Henry Harrison Hammer. Down Coffeyville way. Yeah? The imitation Jesse James. Henry Harrison Hammer. There we are. 23 arrests for armed robbery, no convictions because of lack of evidence. Mm, because he robs the rich and spares the poor, just like Robin Hood. Well, no, there's a difference. You know, Robin Hood used to steal from his rich enemies to give to his poor friends. This one robs just to help himself. Well, what do you mean? Well, it's my opinion that a thief will steal from anybody, rich or poor. Now, Mr. Hammer's reputation has been built carefully and with a purpose. Under the right circumstances, he'd rob a poor man, too. Bottle your best. Check these for me, will you, please? custody, sir. 
On what charge? Suspicion of armed robbery. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Do I look like a robber? Well, you do to Mr. Sloan. Let's go. Empty your pockets. Henry Harrison Hammer. Occupation? Businessman. Six hundred and seventy-seven dollars. And eighty cents. You don't happen to have a watch? No, I don't have a watch. Time means very little to me. It's pretty obvious. He sold it someplace for about fifty dollars. That watch was worth over two hundred. I've never seen this little man in my life, Marshal. What kind of a town is this, where a fat banker can accuse a complete stranger of robbery? How'd you know he was a banker, Mr. Hammond? Just a guess, Marshal. Mm. Well, the court will convene at noon tomorrow. I'll make him comfortable in the meantime. Hmm? Yes, sir. This way. He's the man. What nerve, making no attempt to disguise himself. He does have nerve, and with good reason. Say 23 arrests and no convictions. Well, how can that be? Lack of evidence. I'll see you in court tomorrow, sir. Well, you certainly will. And then he said to the stagecoach driver, I don't bother working people. Thank you, Mr. Sloan. Will the prisoner please stand? Set the man. It is. Your Honor, this man is known to every law officer from Coffeeville North. He's a dangerous criminal, but he's never been convicted of a crime. But today, I think we have the witnesses that will convict him. I'd like to call Mr. Sam Landale to the stand. Thank you, Mr. Sloan. Yes. Raise your right hand. He's going to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. Sit down. Now, Mr. Landale, were you the driver of the regular stagecoach run the afternoon of August 25th? Yep. With Mr. Sloan and Mr. Limestone Parker as passengers? Yep. Would you recognize the man who held up the stage? I don't know about that. Will the prisoner rise? Set the man? I can't rightly say. <laughs> now, Mr. Landale, Mr. Sloan testified that the robber spoke to you. Might be he did. What did he say? Well, I can't rightly remember. I was uh, busy holding the horses. All right. Your Honor, will you please instruct the prisoner to say the words, I don't bother working people? Mr. Hammer, you will repeat those words. I don't bother working people. Now, does that sound like the voice of the man that robbed your stage? I just can't rightly say. <laughs> You're obstructing justice, Mr. Landale, and I'm warning you that... Marshal Lamb! You know better than that. Thank you, Mr. Landale. Will Mr. Limestone Parker please take the stand? Raise your right hand. It's what to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I always do, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Perkins. Now, will you please tell the court exactly what happened? Uh, well, sir, when this robber stopped the stagecoach and he ordered Mr. Sloan, the banker, and me to get out, then quicker enough flash, he found Mr. Sloan's fat wallet and his fancy gold watch. And he took them. <laughs> Did he take anything from you? No. All I had was a little change for beans and bacon. And would you recognize this robber if you saw him again? I sure would. Will the prisoner please rise? Is that the man? No, sir. The robber was short and fat. 
<laughs> I'm Stone Parker. You're a liar. You know very well this man stole my money. Order! Marshal Earp, in view of the conflicting testimony, there's nothing I can do but freely accused. Case dismissed for lack of evidence. Your Honor, because this man supposedly robs only the rich, the people he leaves alone refuse to testify against him. Now, in my opinion... The case dismissed! Thanks kindly, Marshal. Sign this receipt. The horse is outside, all saddled. That's also kind of you, Marshal. But I don't think I'll be needing him for a while. Yes, you will. You're leaving town. Eventually, Marshal. Eventually. It's a nice town you have. Wonderful law enforcement. Man can feel safe here. The minute Mr. Hammer steps out of line, I want to hear about it. Right. Call. Well, now, three queens. I'm afraid I have you beaten again, my friend. Three aces. Drinks for all, bartender. Henry Hammer shares his good fortune. You mean he's won every hand? Oh, he might have lost a few. He's winning the big ones. Without cheating. Sure, he's not playing with kids, you know. How much you figure he's won tonight? Mm, four or five hundred dollars. He just plays his cards right. Yeah, plus the six thirty or so he stole from Mr. Sloan. He's won about another thousand since he's been here. Well, so long as he's got money, he won't make a move. But it can't last forever. Isn't it possible you're wrong about Hammer Wyatt? It's possible, but doubtful. You just keep watching. All right. Marshal Earth. Why, you were the first person I intended to look up. Are you here on business? Yes, sir. I am now representing a line of the finest kitchenware in the country. Could I uh, interest you in some kitchenware, Marshal? <laughs> well, I'm afraid not, Mr. Wilson. Oh, then you're not married yet. Uh, no, sir, not yet. You should be. It's a wonderful life. Gives a man roots, you know. Quite different from the life I used to lead, remember? <laughs> I'll never forget. No, I'd say uh, you were one of the most dishonest gamblers I ever met. You know, I haven't touched a deck of cards since Wichita. No. And I've never properly thanked you. I would have been killed, Marshal, if you hadn't intervened, and justifiably, too. I was cheating. Well, I'm, uh, I'm glad it turned out to be a good life for you, Mr. Wilson. And I hope I can repay you someday. Say, as a starter, how about having supper with me tonight? Well, I'd be glad to, Mr. Wilson. Fine. Where's a good place to eat? Well, let's see. Uh, well, how about the Alhambra? Say, uh, 8 o'clock? Good. See you then. Right, sir. Good evening, gentlemen. Small drink before we start the game? Good evening, Marshal. How are you tonight? Well, Hand, I'd say that man was no friend, Marshal. You're right. Who is he? His name is Henry Harrison Hammer. Did you ever hear of him? I have, but I've forgotten in what connection. Tell me about him. Let's wait till later in my office. Let's eat our dinner in peace, huh? Mm -hmm. That's been going on for a whole week. He's been winning steadily. Well, I just don't understand people like that driver in Limestone. What could he accomplish by lying in court? It tickles him to see Mr. Hammer get away with robbing a banker. And you believe he's just as much a danger to the poor as the rich, huh? I think he'd steal from anybody. The only way that could be proved would be if Mr. Hammer were broke, if he lost every dime he had. Yeah, I know. 
There's very little chance of that happening. Marshal, I see a golden opportunity to repay my great debt to you. Oh, no, Mr. Wilson, I can't let you do that. Can't stop a man from playing cards, Marshal. But you just told me yourself you haven't gambled in years. I proved to myself I don't have to gamble. I promise I'll never do it again after tonight. Well, like I told you, he's lucky. Please, Marshal, this is Dusty Wilson you're talking to. To quote you, one of the most dishonest gamblers I ever met. <laughs> don't worry, Marshal. $10. I'll just see that. Cards? Two. I, uh, I think I'll just play these. Check. Check, yeah. That'll just cost you $50, Mr. Hammer. Not such luck in my life. Would you care to continue tomorrow, sir? Perhaps your luck will change. Now, give me the card. Keep an eye on it. Well, he cleaned out Mr. Hammerwhite. Yes, sir, Marshal. These old hands have never lost their charm. <laughs> Say, I was watching you pretty close. I never saw you cheat, did you? Oh, please, no professional secrets. There's almost $1,500 there. Mr. Wilson, you're a genius, and I want to thank you. Oh, no trouble at all, Marshal. Good day. Say, wait a minute. Mr. Hammer is what I think he is. You're going to be the first victim. We both live in the same hotel. I don't want to use you as bait, Mr. Wilson. You've already done enough for us, and... Well, I, uh... I think you'll find ourselves most comfortable. All right, but, uh... Not a word of this to my family, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. Now, Hammer's only other source of quick money. You'll be the bank or the stagecoach. I want you to place three deputies in the bank. All right. Now, you said the stagecoach. There's not always someone with money riding there. I know. Mr. Sloan will make a ship in the bank funds to Wichita on the afternoon stage. At least I want you to spread that rumor around. Now, you watch Hammer yourself. If he leaves town, you follow him. Where are you going to be? I'll be inside the stagecoach. Come on, I'll make you comfortable. Money. It's inside. Climb down. Open the door. Drop that gun, Hammer. One move and your driver's a dead man. Ah, no money box, I see. A nice trick if you got away with it, Herb. Remember, this man dies if you don't stay put. All right, close the door. Up there. All right, Wyatt. Yeah, what took you so long? He's got a fast horse. He got away from me. Keep on his trail. I'll be with you in a minute. Hey, come on. Yeah. Come on, give me a hand with the lead horse. toward Crow Hill. <sighs> That's a rough climb. Any other cabins up there besides Limestone Parkers? Not that I know of. Let's go. You sure nobody can get up here without us hearing them? <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> you can hear anybody coming a quarter of a mile away. Good. Got a nice, comfortable little place, Limestone. Yeah, and you're welcome to hide out here just as long as you like, Henry. <laughs> you know, uh, it ain't every day that I have a celebrity visiting me. <laughs> well, 
Where's the cab? The track's heading right for it. Don't see any other way to get there without making a racket. Let's move. What did I tell you? Here. Get in here, quick. I'll handle everything. Anybody been by here in the last couple of hours? No, sir, not a soul, Marshal. Are you aware that helping a uh, criminal to escape is a serious offense? Oh, sure. I know that, Marshal. Well, I'm sorry to have troubled you. Oh, it's no trouble at all, Marshal. Just uh, drop by any time. <laughs> Thank you. He's gone. Don't you, it's me. Thanks, old friend. You know, I ain't had such a laugh since that day in court. You know, when that old banker yelled at me, <laughs> I was fit to bust. You don't like bankers much, do you? No, I don't trust them, neither. I feel the same way. I figure if a man can't take care of his money, he don't deserve to have it. That's right. Now, you take me, for instance. I'm a thrifty man. I don't have much, but I don't need much. <laughs> My life saving is just $320. <laughs> you think I'd put that in that old man Sloan's bank? No, sir. Where is it, Limestone? I... Why? Uh, you don't want my money, Henry. Oh, yes, I do. Now get it, and no tricks. Oh, Henry. <laughs> All right, now step back. I, I must be dreaming. I thought you said you only stole from the rich. Nobody ever told them differently. And nobody will. Especially you. Oh, now, please, please, I, I won't tell. You might. Come on. Marshal, he was going to kill me. I know that, Limestone. What do you think about testifying against him now? Yes, sir. Thank you, Hal. Patch him up. You know, you ought to keep that money in the bank. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I sure am glad you came back, Marshal. What made you do it? You? You had the same twinkle in your eye when you lied on the witness stand. Oh, I, I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have done it. Mr. Sloan, I have your money right here. But you said he was stone broke when you arrested him. Uh, well, let's say he was relieved of his money by a method that uh, I can't discuss. Uh, I think you had $630. I think you'll find it there in that package. How much would you say your watch was worth? But there's a lot left. Was that all from Hammer? Every nickel. And the school fund can use it quite nicely. Uh, Mr. Wilson has refused any uh, fee for his services. Uh, school fund, eh? Well, why don't you keep that for the fund, Marklin? Here, here. Add this to it. Well, thank you very much. Not a bad fellow. <laughs> you 
You sure that's Wyatt Earp down there riding shotgun? Wells Fargo advertised he's gonna take that stage through to Hayes, Kansas. There's the ad. Read it yourself. Point is, what are we gonna do about Earp? Gonna kill him and rob the stage. You mean take all the boys and ride down there and blast them, huh? No. This time we're gonna use an old engine trick. Earp won't die right away. But in the end, he'll be just as dead. Wyatt's old friend and former employer, Wells Fargo and Company, operated an important stage line connecting the Santa Fe at Dodge City with the Union Pacific at Hayes, Kansas. A hundred miles of wilderness stretched between the two railroads. It was a natural hunting ground for the stage robbers, and in 1878, the Purvis gang moved south to prey upon the shipments of money and bullion entrusted to Wells Fargo. Back and guns, drunk and disorderly in the street, fist fight. Anything else? Yeah, this one resisted arrest. And it's probably five more days for you. Well, howdy, Mr. Tom Russell. Howdy, Wyatt. Mr. Masterson, put him in the cell. Come on back for the powwow. Yes, sir. Let's go. Now you look pretty, pretty good shape. Feel pretty good. Wells Fargo never thinks of me anymore unless you're in some kind of trouble. Now, what brings the chief special agent all the way from San Francisco? The whole Purvis gang is camped at your back door. Hmm. Sit down. Now, they're operating in uh, Hodgman and Pawnee counties, aren't they? Yeah, I know it isn't your territory, so the company forgives you. <laughs> well, that's nice. Hey, that's, uh, that's a mighty handsome ring you got there. New, isn't it? Old-timer's ring. The company just started awarding him. Old-timer's ring, huh? Oh, I like the design. You stamp it in red wax on a letter, and the big chief himself reads it. And all the power and glory of Wells Fargo is at my command. <laughs> well, I'm an old-timer. They ought to give me one. Maybe they will. What's the catch? Find me a map of Kansas, Wyatt. I'll show you. All right. And you know, we're supposed to be like the Texas Rangers. Touch a Wells Fargo stage, and if it takes 10 years, we'll get you. Well, you always do, Mr. Tom. Well, that sure makes for a lot of long chases, though. Ah, that's just the point, Mr. Masterson. The Purvis outfit are real rough boys. They don't scare easy. Hard men, huh? Wyatt and I were joshing before you came in. He wants an old-timer's ring like this one. Very nice. I told him there'd be a catch. Yeah, what is it? Ride shotgun on one of our stages, north to Hayes. And let us advertise in the local paper that you're going to do it. Oh, wait a minute. Wyatt would be asking for trouble, Mr. Russell. Yes, he would. I can think of a lot more sensible ways of you getting killed. Mr. Russell's got the makings of a good idea. I'm your man on one condition. You and uh, Mr. Masterson follow behind me with a posse. How close? Ten miles. Well, what good would that do? You'd be dead in a money gun. Mr. Masterson, I'm asking Wells Fargo to do me a big favor. A posse? I don't quite understand why. I want the Purvis gang caught. If they do jump the stage, you'll be close enough behind to pick up a fresh trail. Not ten years from now, either. All right, Wyatt. I'll wire the main office and see if I can get permission. And don't let Mr. Masterson talk you out of it. I'll be at the hotel, Wyatt. Right, see you later. Uh, you and Wells Fargo. What, have they got a mortgage on you or something? No, I owe them, Mr. Masterson. They gave me a job when I was nothing but a kid. They trusted me with passengers, teams, and money. Now, why do you think you owe me? Well, that's... That's different. No. I took you on when you were just 20 years old as a deputy. Well, yeah, yeah, but that's personal. You, you Wells Fargo's a big company. No, sir. It's a fine name. They got a great reputation. No, they fought for law and order and trails that you never rode and in towns that you never heard of. All right. But well, look, will you make the distance to the posse five miles? No. Purvis and his gang would see the dust at five miles. You'd scare them off. Ten miles. And I promise to give you a decent Christian burial. Well, that's very nice of you, Mr. Masterson. <laughs> Wells Fargo and their $20 bills. I'm going to write their president and tell him to send their payroll shipments in hundreds. <laughs> hey, Danny. Oh, shut up. You made me lose my place. This file, Danny. Uh, thanks. This is something you ought to see. That a newspaper? I never read them. You better read this one. They hired Wyatt Earp to ride shotgun. Wyatt Earp? 
Our regular stage bound for Hayes and Northern Points will leave Dodge City at 9 a.m. as usual tomorrow. Marshal Wyatt Earp will ride shotgun. The stage will carry men, passengers only, and they will ride at their own risk. Wells Fargo and Company. You know, Danny, if Wyatt Earp is riding shotgun, there must be an awful lot of money on that stage. Pinkham, you got a brain. Of course there's a lot of money on it. Twenty, twenty, twenty. Now, Mr. Masterson, I want you to give us exactly one hour head start. You'll be traveling faster than us, so I want you to make check stops here. Jones Hill here, right at the beginning of the Narrows, making time allowances. Now, we all know the schedule of the stage. I have a firm agreement with the Wells Fargo Company to keep that posse 10 miles back at all times. You understand that? Yes, sir. I'm still against taking passengers, Wyatt. I think we should pile freight in the coach. Well, that'd be a dead giveaway. Now, that gang has never hurt any passengers yet. Now, the agent over at the stage depot has been told to repeat the warning that people are going to be traveling at their own risk. Besides, uh, we may not have any passengers, in which case I suggest we uh, load with freight. I'll settle for that. You know, actually, I don't think Purvis is going to jump us. Not because I'm riding shotgun, but because I think he'll smell a trap. He's not that smart. Well, that's one of the reasons why I agreed to this deal. Just how smart is Danny Purvis? I've always been a fool for questions like that. Right, Hal? Yeah. <laughs> no, you're a fool for Wells Fargo. Well, I'll tell him the truth, Mr. Tom. The truth? Well, sure. I've always wanted an old-timer's ring like yours. Say, uh, who's going to be driving number eight? Pat Duncan. Hmm. Well, he's a good man, but I'd rather have Milt Caney. Milt's loco. Well, Mr. Masterson, in order to be a great stage driver, you got to be a mite loco. Now, you uh, put Milt Caney on the box. I uh, rode with him once through an Apache ambush on the Phoenix Trail. He was popping Indians off the lead horses with a black snake whip. It was like uh, swatting flies. All right, Wyatt. Melt Caney. I just got one final question, Mr. Tom. What's that? Does your company pay for Wyatt's funeral? All expenses, Bat. Let's break this up. Tomorrow may be a busy day. Before you buy your tickets, read that. Well, what does it say? Our regular stage bound for Hayes and Northern Points will leave Dodge City at 9 a.m. as usual tomorrow. Marshal Wyatt Earp will ride shotgun. The stage will carry men passengers only, and they will ride at their own risk. <coughs> There must be robbers in the trail, or they wouldn't be warning us. So what if there are? There's gold in the Black Hills. Well, we could wait one day, Sammy. Gold claims don't wait. I'm going. That's okay. What? I think it's much ado about nothing. Well, yeah, could be, Milk. I've got to write them bosses in San Francisco another letter. They ain't answered my last one yet. And they ain't sent me my old timer's ring, neither. Give them time, they've been kind of busy. What? He was always a clean living boy. How do you stand with him now? Him? You mean the good Lord? <laughs> well, I guess I can only claim a fair to middling rank. I'll put in a good word for you. Well, thank you. That's mighty kind of you. Oh, take nothing. You emperor Satan. Do you see this? I want you to keep a tight trace on this trip, and I don't want no biting or snorting or staggering, you hear me? What? You check the passengers. I've got to cuss these horses in a quiet way. <laughs> now, Joe, I want to tell you something. Oh, ma'am, I'm sorry. But there are no women allowed on this trip. Who's putting me off? My name is Wilkins, young man, and I'm a great-grandmother. My first great-grandson was born up to Hayes last week, and I aim to see him. And I aim to go on this coach. Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Wilkins, but you see, the company thinks there's going to be some trouble. Trouble? <laughs> I've had trouble all my life. Well, I'm sure you could postpone your trip one day. You see, there's liable to be some shooting. Young man, when you get to be my age, you don't postpone things. 
Now, you just climb up there in the boot, young fella. And if the bandits give you any trouble, I'll give you a hand. Yes, sir. Three passengers, Marshal Earp. Four. Huh? Grandma Wilkins is going along. Oh, no. The company gave me strict orders. All right, you pull her off. You just try it, and there'll be a fight. Will you explain it to Wells Fargo, Mr. Earp? Yeah. All right, there's the money box. You sign here. I'm Sam Price, Marshal. This is my partner, Ned Hilling. Clayton, Lee Clayton. Mr. Price, Mr. Hilling, Mr. Clayton. Climb aboard, gentlemen. Why, it's wrong, you know. They're gonna jump him just as soon as he gets across that county line. Wyatt said 10 miles. I gave him my word. Hal. Yeah? Look, I think we ought to follow Wyatt closer. How do you boys feel? Same as you do, but Wyatt's running the show. He said to wait an hour. I always try to be reasonable. All right, then we go. In 45 minutes. Look, Mr. Russell. Matt, Matt, hold it, Mr. Russell. Strain the point already. Yeah. Do we take her from here, Danny? Nope. We'll wait and see if a posse's following him. Then we'll ride along either side of him at rifle range. You understand? You mean pick off her and the driver? If we can shoot that good. If we can't, we'll have to move in a little closer and drop some of the horses. And then close in. Go divide the boys so we'll have some guns on the west side, too. Wait a minute. I don't want any of that fancy Jesse James stuff until I give the word. Yes, sir. Bill, Ben, Charlie. You go over the other way. Why can't we have some air in here? The sun's on that side. It'll burn you up. Second, we don't want to be setting ducks. What? We don't want to make ourselves targets for road agents. Ah, city fellers. <laughs> road agents, they wouldn't jump us here. We're too close to Dodge City. Grandma's right. Do they usually shoot at the passengers? Not unless some tarnation idiot shoots at them. Won't we be expected to help, Mr. Earp? Well, that's what he's hired for. Correct, Sonny, correct. But you let Mr. Clayton here help Marshal Earp, uh, if it comes to that. Not me, Grandma. Oh, you're a gunfighting man, sure. I took a good look at your gun and holster. That holster's Texas hide, cured stiff for a quick draw, and all the blue ones worn off the front side of your coat. Ah, uh, you've got the eyes of a gunfighting man. Relax, friends. I don't help no John Law. Oh, drat it. There, I dropped a stitch. Now, that's bad luck. Is that her riding shotgun? Uh, too far to tell. As they come abreast of us, we'll start playing Indian with them. Milk, riders. Do you suppose they won't us? Yeah. Pull them up. I gotta get those passengers out. Whoa! Oh, oh. 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 What are we stopping here for? What's going Sorry, on? folks, but this is as far as we go. What's happened? Outlaws, Mr. Kenny and I are gonna try to make a run for it. The rest of you out. Come on, Grandma. I will not. I'm comfortable. Well, I want out. Come on, Sammy. No, I've got a gun, Marshal. I'll help. Come on, get out of there. Well, shall we dust him? Not yet. I'll tell you when. Now, there's a posse following us. You just wait here. Come on, Mr. Clayton. Come on, Grandma. Come on. No! Should I lift her up? Yeah, but take it easy. Come on. You just try it, you old coot, and I'll pick your eyes out with my knitting needles. Come on, Grandma. Now. Get aboard them bullets. I'll stay with Grandma. All right. Yeah, 
They jumped Wyatt. Ten miles behind, Wyatt said. Well, that doesn't go anymore. You come with me, or you mosey along with Russell? Well, if you want to go fast, I'll race you there. Hiya! You're all right. We can't outrun him, Wyatt. Let's stop and make a fight of it. Now head for those bullets at this. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Now stay down there. You want to get yourself killed? Oh. If I stay down there, I will get myself killed. Look at that. Nice. I knew it. I knew you could do it. as you can. Ed, you and Charlie and Fred keep after them. The rest of us will cut across through the narrows over here. They can't travel as fast over there. Well, they certainly can't. We'll pick them off. Now go ahead and keep wide apart so they won't know we split up. Katie. I'm afraid it can't be much help, Wyatt. I know, but come on down. Just try to keep the blood stopped. Come on, get him over there on the rock. Right. I'll take care of him now. Oh, just get out of my way now, right? Say, what are you doing that for, Sonny? Trying to prevent a wreck and a runaway. Purvis knows we're heading into winding roads. Cut his men in half. So half of them cross country. So they can pop up in front of us. Hey, get going. Whoa. The minute that firing started again, those horses had run off and gotten themselves into a wreck, busted up that stage. Well, that's real good thinking, son. No sense in busting up a good stage and killing animals. Come on, Mel. Hey, Grandma, pick up that Winchester. Let's go up the hill. Let's go. Watch yourself. Take it easy. Damn, that's it. Get down in there, Milt. Stay there. Grandma, get up in the rock and the left. Come on. In the left. Now stay behind that rock. Start reloading that Winchester. Milt, you keep under cover. I sure like a young fella that's got a brain, and you got one. Hush up, Grandma. Here they come. Shots. 
You just keep reloading, I'll do the firing. Posse better show up before we run out of bullets. Sonny, how many are there? I can't tell. Hey, reload that butt line special. Give me that Winchester. Well, this might have been a good trick for Indians, but we ain't Indians. I think we ought to hide the horses and try to take off on foot. Yeah, maybe you're right. I didn't spoil nothing, Sonny. This darn thing almost jammed on me. Thank you, Grandma. Hey, you're a pretty rugged gal. Yeah, always was. But you should have known my grandma. Oh, Grandma was a case. <laughs> Drat him. See, here comes some men. Are they ours? Well, they better be. Posse coming. Some people just won't stop at nothing. You stay put. Drop your belts. Come on, Milk. All right, Ryan. I told you 10 miles was too far. Stop yakking and go oh, look at the water. All right, Ryan. Oh. Hey, tough old buzzard. You're going to be good as new in a couple of weeks. You folks sure did a good job. I can't make a Wells Fargo speech for you. Well, here. Mail it back when you get yours. Well, thank you, Mr. Tom. Milt, hold out your good hand. No joker. Sure, you earned it. Now, when Wells Fargo sends you your own, why, well, you just mail that one back to Mr. Tom. My old time was right. But I didn't pay for Wells Fargo. I only cuss the horses. <laughs> hey, Sonny, come on, come on, let's get moving. That little baby will be walking before his grandmother ever gets up to Hayes. Grandmother, he may be walking by the time we find those horses. Hey, Hal, give me a hand, will you? Well, he cleaned up the country, the old Wild West country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh.